Bonjour, je suis Chris et aujourd'hui, je vais vous parler de Present Perfect. Souvent, le Present Perfect est difficile pour mes élèves francophones parce que le Present Perfect n'existe pas en français. Ça ressemble à le passé composé parce qu'il y a le verbe avoir avec le participe passé, mais ce n'est pas le passé composé. Le Present Perfect est utilisé dans trois façons différentes. Et je vais vous expliquer tout ça rapidement, facilement et avec des explications simples. Ce sera presque tout en anglais, la vidéo, mais ne vous inquiétez pas, vous pouvez toujours cliquer sur le sous-titre en bas si nécessaire pour mieux suivre mon anglais. Allez, let's go and talk about the present perfect. Okay, so the present perfect is formed using the verb to have plus the participe passé of the verb. Uh, so an example could be something like, I have lived uh, in France for 20 years. I have lived in France for 20 years. Now we have the verb have and we have the participe passé, so it is the present perfect. It's nice and easy to form the present perfect, but now we are going to go and look at when we use the present perfect because it is used in three different ways. Let's go. Okay, so number one, the first way of using the present perfect is when it talks about something that happened in the past and continues today. So my example I just talked about before with I have lived in France for 20 years is the present perfect. It's something that started in the past but now continues today. I am still in France. Right now, making this video, I am in France. So it is continuing today. I have lived in France for 20 years. Okay, reason number two is an interesting one. This would be something like, uh, I have written 200 songs. I have written 200 songs. I really like to play the guitar and I often write songs. In my past, I wrote one, two, three, four, five, two hundred songs. But I do not say I wrote two hundred songs. I do not use the simple past or the preterit in this instance. I must use the present perfect because the present perfect in, uh, in the second way of using the present perfect talks about things that happened in the past with the possibility of the future. Now, I could write another song tomorrow. I could write another song in 10 years, in five years, etc. I am alive. It is possible that I might write more songs. For somebody that is not alive, a songwriter, um, Michael Jackson, for example, Michael Jackson, Unfortunately, he is dead, so he cannot write more songs. So for Michael Jackson, I would say, Michael Jackson wrote 300 songs. I had to use the simple past for him. Michael Jackson wrote 300 songs. He does not have the possibility to write more songs in the future. I do, and so I use the present perfect. Rule number two here. We're talking about something that's happened in the past, but I have the possibility of the future. I have written 200 songs. Um, I have never been to the moon. I have never been to the moon. 
I am alive, there is an extremely small chance that I might go to the moon in the future. Even if the possibility is this small, we use the present perfect. I'm talking about my past. Never in my past have I been to the moon. Never. But it might happen. I'm alive. It's possible. Um, another very common one is for eating things. I have never eaten snake. I've never eaten a snake. Never. Never. I have never eaten a snake. It's possible though, in the future, that I might eat snake. I have been to a Vietnamese restaurant where they had snake, but I didn't choose it. I have never eaten snake. So I have that possibility in the future. That's what uh, rule number two with the present perfect is all about. It's talking about your past with the possibility of the future. Okay, reason or rule number three for the present perfect is when we're talking about something happened in the past, but there is a result right at this moment. There's a consequence right at this moment. Something like, um, I have lost my keys. I have lost my keys. We don't know when I lost my keys, but the important thing, the result right at this moment is, I don't have my keys. I can't, I can't uh, open the door, close the door, use my car, etc. At this moment, I have no keys. I have lost my keys. It's different than when you use the simple past, uh, something like, I lost my keys yesterday. Okay, yesterday I lost my keys. Maybe I found them again. Maybe I have them now. I don't know. But with the present perfect, when you use the present perfect in this instance, it means at this moment, no keys. I don't have my keys right now. I have lost my keys. Um, another very common one is uh, about eating. I have eaten a big lunch. I have eaten a big lunch. Big lunch, two hamburgers, fries, all these things. Big, big, big lunch. It means, at this moment, I am not hungry. At this moment, I am not hungry. I have eaten a big lunch. Maybe I have a big stomach at this moment. But the important thing is, there's a result there. At this moment, I'm not hungry. Now, they are the three different ways we use the present perfect. So we had uh, number one was something that happened in the past and continues at the moment. I have lived in France for 20 years. Number two was things happened in the past with a possibility of the future. Um, I have written 200 songs. I have been to Italy. I've been to Italy. In my past, I went to Italy, but there's a possibility tomorrow, next year, in 10 years, I might go to Italy again. I'm alive, I use the present perfect when I had that possibility. And then finally, uh, reason number three was the result or the consequence at this moment. I have eaten a big lunch. I have lost my keys. Uh, Tim has broken the vase. Tim has broken the vase, ah. At this moment, the vase is broken. There's pieces of vase on the ground. Tim has broken the vase. Here are three different ways uh, of using the present perfect. I'm going to leave you with some more examples now.
I hope that really helps you to distinguish the difference between the simple past and the present perfect. Thanks for watching and remember if you like this video please press the like button and also that other button just next to it, the subscribe button. I would love to have you as part of the Anglais Amic and Anglophone community. Bye-bye.